how would you like to save hundreds of dollars? And I'm serious. If you're into power stations and you're thinking about buying a power station, particularly those power stations that have add-on batteries that you can buy, like the Blue Eddy, the EcoFlow, the Anchor, all of those guys out there, stick around because I'm going to show you how not to spend in that extra fancy battery to plug into your power station so that you have more power. And to show you that, I'm going to pull a couple things from over here right in front of me and then we're going to talk about how I could save you that money. Stand by. Now this is not a sponsored video, though full disclosure, I didn't buy these components and I'm not required to make this video for these two companies, just so you know. All right, let's talk. One of the things I see a lot lately is people buying portable power stations like this one right here and buying the manufacturer's add-on battery for those. And the first one I looked up to get some prices this morning and I already knew basically what those prices were, but the first one I looked up, it was on sale for $4.99 and change. So basically $500. Now that battery was a 1000 watt hour battery. The next company I looked at to get 2,000 watt hours was $1,000 for another one. And I thought, holy smokes, even at $500, $500 to get 1,000 watt hours means $1,000 to get 2,000 watt hours. Well, guess what? This guy right here is a 2,560 watt hour battery. It's a 100 amp hour, 25.6 volt battery made by XDNY. Now I've also done another video very similar to this one where I tested a similar setup to what I'm gonna show you here. But for now, I wanna show you this one because this one works brilliantly. But there are a couple things that I wanna mention before I show it to you. The first thing is, you need to know what your solar input is on your power station, what the maximum is, maximum voltage and maximum amperage. That's really important. If, for example, you have a power station with a maximum input voltage of 20 volts, then that is really designed for a 12 volt solar panel. For example, a 100 watt foldable solar panel is typically around 20 volts, five amps, that's five times 20 equals 100. And I have one here. This one here is a Jackery panel. And they work great. Most of those power stations are rated for those, the smaller ones, but the bigger ones are often rated for much higher power. This particular power station can take 50 volts coming in, actually 11,250. If you're going to try to plug in a 12 volt battery into a lot of those units, it's actually better to convert it to 24 volts. And you can do that with this guy. This is called a buck converter. And all it does is it takes 12 volts and it converts it to 24 and it will allow a 10 amp max. That's perfect for small power stations that can only allow 24 volts to come in. But on a power station like this one, the bigger power stations, and I think all of your brands are gonna be like this, whether it's Blue Eddy, Anchor, EcoFlow, doesn't matter. They all have limits a bit higher, up to 50 plus volts. So you can definitely get some higher voltages in your bigger power supplies. Now the next thing you wanna look at for your power supply is what kind of solar input does it have? Because if it has the DIN style or the eight millimeter type style like this, then you're gonna to have to get a cable to match that. If it has an XT60, well then you're gonna to have to get an XT60 or an XT90, which is what this is. You'll have to get a cable like that. And you can see here that I just have this cable hooked up to the positive and negative on my battery with this XT90 connector. That XT90 connector will go right into the XT90 solar input on this power station. This is the AFRI P210. It's a 2400 watt pure sine wave inverter built into this with a 2048 watt hour battery. Now this unit's a great unit. I've used it to run power saws, table saws, miter saws, and compressors. So, it can really take a beating and you could actually run my cabin off of this power station if and only if you added some backup power to it. And that's what a lot of people are trying to do today. It's easier, I think, for a lot of people to buy portable power stations than to build their own do-it-yourself power. So instead of going out, buying a charge controller, buying an inverter, getting all the breakers and fuses and solar panels and racks and all those things, a lot of people are actually putting in small solar arrays, getting someone else to put it in even for them. I saw a post recently about a company that put in a small solar array to charge up an EcoFlow system. 
and they, they had one EcoFlow portable power station. I think it had a thousand watt hours or 2000 watt hours. So basically something either half this size or about this size. Now, by the way, AFRI, even at $900, which was the latest price I saw on this one, is at least 50% less than those more expensive ones. Could be even more than that. And by 50%, I'm saying those, those more expensive ones run about $1,500 to $2,000. So $900, I could run my cabin off this with this extra battery. So how do you do it? It's actually really simple, folks. On the AFRI, on the back side, there's a little, little door that flips up and you've got your XT90. It says DC XT90 input, 11.5 to 50 volts, 500 watt max. So that would be 50 volts at 10 amps. Okay, so we take that and all we do is we take this connector and plug it in right there. Did you hear that? that fan word up? And look at that. There's 500 watts coming in right now. And we are at 99%. So we're actually pulling just over 500 watts. Look at that, 511 I saw at one point. So we are literally charging up the power station with this battery. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but you're just charging it up. Ah, but you see, that's the beauty of this. I can plug something directly into this power station and run it right now, and it would work fine. Let's do it. <laughs> right behind you is the light that I'm using for filming. So let's get that light and plug it in here and see what happens. What happens, pull this over here, flip this up, stick that in, and turn that on. Let's see what happens, folks. All right, we're pulling 500. Oh, I gotta turn the light back on now. There goes the light. We're still pulling 500 watts, and output is now 21 watts to run the light. Full charge time is 12 minutes, and we're actually running that light, pulling over 20 watts. So what that means is that by plugging this in to the solar input, the unit, it, it doesn't care, it's dumb. All it knows is that it has 25.6 volts coming in. It can use 20 amps of that. And so it's gonna use that to get that 500 watts of charging. And if this is full and I turn that light off, it'll stop doing anything. It'll just sit there with all that extra capacity right here. That's 2,560 watt hours of capacity that it can fully use before it touches the battery in the power station itself. And that's how that works. So you don't have to buy those really expensive batteries. I mean, they're fancy. Let's, <laughs> those companies make those really fancy. They put readouts and buttons and things on them so you can see just what that battery's doing. But you know what? I could put a multimeter on this and see what my battery's doing just as well. I got a fancy meter right here. I don't need one on my battery. And I'm certainly not gonna pay hundreds of dollars more to get that one when I can get this. And again, that was $500 for a 1,000 watt hour battery, probably 1,024 watt hours, but nonetheless, that's less than half the capacity of this one here, which is 2,560 watt hours. The XDNY today, $500, 2,560 watt hours, $900, 2,048 watt hours, plus the inverter and everything else. We're at 100%, we're putting out 21 watts. We're still pulling in 250. Now, why would you still be pulling in 250? Well, a lot of times these guys will say 100%, it's rounded up. It can't say 99.7 or six or five or whatever, but it's obviously ramping down how much power it's using off this battery in order to fully charge the battery up on the power station. Once it's fully charged, if I shut this light off, it'll go back to zero. And it'll just sit there and it won't do anything. We're gonna be using this this weekend to run some crock pots while we're camping because I don't have LiPo 4s in my camper. So I'm just gonna take this along, plug it into this guy here and run those all day and we'll be out wheeling all day in my Jeep, come back and we'll have some nice chili ready for dinner. This will do that because at 4,600 watt hours, it's plenty of power for this thing to run that crock pot. It's gonna work great. So there you have it. Hey, drop a line, let me know. Did I save you some money? Had you thought about doing this before? If not, let me know, or even if you have, let me know. And if you run one of those more expensive units and you've bought their batteries, are you thinking about it now wondering, hmm, 
I wonder if I could do more. We'll drop a link in the video below to all of these items on Amazon so you can check them out and let me know what you think. Meanwhile, folks, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.